feel like with every video, I need to say it, like start it with a disclaimer that I am on a back road. I have 20 minutes of, or 20 minutes, 20 miles of empty road. I would not be recording if I were not like somewhere where, you know, I'm safe. I'm not bothering anybody else. Um, but I just wanted to update you guys. I think I said last week, my nerves were completely shot last week. Um, and I think at one point I even said, like, I don't know how I'm going to keep updating you week to week, appointment to appointment, because, you know, it's pretty standard. You do the same thing. It's a process. But then, like, things like this week happen, and I'm like, holy shit. Like, EMDR therapy is so trippy. The places that your mind goes that you never expect. I mean, even at one point she told me, that you might be thinking of a thought and it's completely unrelated to anything in your life but then suddenly you'll remember something from childhood and it just really trips me out so last week I told you guys that my last appointment oh man it was disturbing on the scale of 1 to 10 10 being the most disturbing how does this memory make you feel I felt a 10. I was, it was so heavy. It was so like depressing. It physically hurt. My body physically hurt because I was in like, I don't want to say like I was in so much emotional pain because that, I mean, that sounds dramatic, but like just my body was really feeling the pain. That's all I'll say. Like it just felt heavy. I felt really sad. I couldn't control my tears. It was very disturbing on the disturbing scale. But this year, or this year, I was going to say this year. This week, she asked me if we wanted to continue where we left off last week or if I thought I was ready to move on to the next, um, like, noticeable moment in time. And I told her, I said, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm not completely sure. Like, obviously, I still feel sad, but I know that you're going to feel sad. Like, the sadness doesn't go away. It's just your body's response to the sadness. And she said, well, you know, let's, um, I think that we should continue with it because, you know, while you did make progress, I think I went from, on the scale of 1 to 10, I went from a 10 to a 6. Um, even though we made progress, I think maybe we can make more progress. And so we essentially started right back up where we left off last week. And that is why when you inquire about EMDR therapy, there really is no set in stone time frame for it. It really is a process and it just depends on like how quickly you move through these memories, these triggers, these traumas, um, and they won't move on unless they feel like you are ready and in a place where you can move on to the next thing. So, like I said, last week, extremely disturbing. This week, not as much so, but on the scale of one to 10, I think I started at a six, which is where I left off last week. And by the end of it, I think I said I was like a two or three, which is just blows my mind. I'm going to get into it. So we were discussing loss. Um, there is someone that I lost and it was, it was a very, it was a traumatizing situation. It was completely unexpected. There's a lot of guilt tied to it. Um, just a lot of different emotions and negative beliefs attached to it. And so last year, or last, why do I keep saying last year? Last week, the memories were extremely vivid, extremely painful. This week, it started with me, I think it started with me seeing the person, seeing, seeing a memory at my home. And, um, I don't remember exactly what the first one was. For some reason, I always forget the first, the first, like, part of the process but you know she asked how do you feel and I said I feel sad uh, but I don't feel as disturbed as I did before and then it moved into okay do the process again and the next thing that popped up to me was my children and telling them what had happened but I told it to them in a way that I felt as a parent was appropriate for them a way that they would understand it um, 
so it didn't necessarily have the entire truth it was modified to fit their you know what's appropriate for their age however with that I feel a lot of sometimes I feel guilt and I question if I should have just been a hundred percent raw and so that was what I when she said like what came up for you it was that image of my kids and the emotion of guilt and the specific image is that my kids you know they laid in bed for three days every night and they cried and they cried and they cried and obviously as a parent that's really devastating so not only was the the trauma my own but then I had to walk through it with my kids then we did the process again she asked what came up and I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm missing like details but what came up the third time was I pictured my kids with this I, I pictured three of them standing in my home their backs were to me and I felt the emotion attached to that was I felt gratitude and ooh, I forgot in the beginning initially I felt resentment towards someone because I felt like someone could have helped the issue um, could have helped to avoid the loss and I recognized that that was not a fair emotion that I didn't feel good that I felt that but that's just where my body went and the thing about EMDR is you have to just go where your body is going and you can't think too much about it because doing that letting it just come really helps you work through like where your mind wants to go and process it so the third thing the third emotion I felt I said I felt gratitude I felt so much gratitude I say it about my kids all the time they are so much stronger than I was as a child and I also felt a little bit of pride in myself which is really hard for me to compliment myself in any way but I felt a little bit of pride because that is something that I worked really hard to instill in them I wanted them to be stronger than me I wanted them to be detached from situations but in a healthy way I wanted them to recognize their emotions and I've taught them that like you can cry I want you to cry all you want you can be sad but I've also taught them to really train their mind to see the good in it to see the positive and um, you know look back on these situations as a learning opportunity as you know you know you think of like loss like looking back at the loss you know now this person is you know not in any pain they're happy whatever right so I felt immense gratitude then the last one is what really just shook me to my core because I had that same exact image of the three of them in the backyard in my house and I saw a purple what I can only describe as an aura I saw a purple aura leave the body and then go up to heaven and run around in the clouds and this is something we kind of had to break down because I've never talked about this in any way on my channel I don't think but I'm not a super religious person if anything I would call myself spiritual but I know nowadays everybody's like I'm spiritual I'm spiritual and it's like what does that actually mean I it's very complicated I don't want to get too in-depth but like thinking of heaven and hell is not something that is present in my life really I I'm a very curious person I have a lot of questions I'm always like thinking about things and analyzing and it's part of why I have such bad anxiety and so I'm that person that's like I know I'm supposed to believe in something and if I die I want to die having believed in something because I don't want to be penalized essentially for not believing in it but I also like I have questions I'm curious there are things that don't make sense to me and things that I just I really doubt in my mind sometimes and so what I was telling my therapist is that that was a complete shock to me to have that image to have that vision it just popped up in my mind it's not like I was creating something intentionally it literally just popped up in my mind that was the image I saw and the image stuck um, and at first I felt happy because I felt you know I went into that that place of like there's no more pain um, it just something about it felt peaceful and then the very last thing that popped in my mind right before she stopped the buzzing moments was I saw the second loss I had two losses back to back I've talked about this before one was completely unexpected was not prepared for it and then I lost you know Luna 
and that was a month long just thing going through that. And so at the very last second before the buzzers stopped, Luna popped up next to the first loss. And I just like, I started crying. I was crying. I just, I couldn't stop it. You know, the time before she had asked me if I needed a tissue and I said, no, I'm good. Cause I, I felt contained, but then I just started crying and there was no controlling it. And I told her it's a very bizarre feeling because I don't feel overwhelmingly sad or disturbed or it doesn't, it just doesn't feel overwhelming, but like, I can't not cry. I just have to cry and she said that that's very normal it's a release it's the body's response to introducing these new memories so that was what I that was what I said when I experienced that I was talking to her saying you know that is so trippy that this image popped up in my mind when it's never something I've really ever thought about I've never pictured somebody in heaven I've never it's just not present in my life so to see that see an image of the soul leaving the body and to feel that peace that was connected to it I'm not gonna lie a small part of me was like where did that come from and that's something maybe that I need to tap into and look into I I don't know to be honest with you but we ended up leaving it there because it was the perfect space to stop because you know back-to-back -back loss is part of the back-to-back -back trauma that I experienced it's just was so much happening within months of, of each other without being able to heal from the first thing so because it ended in that other loss being introduced it was the perfect sp spot to stop and then come back to next week and start with that so that's what it was all I can say is when you go into it have no expectations allow your mind and your body to go where it needs to go i've seen a woman that had a trauma from her childhood of um, almost drowning and when she did emr she literally raised her hand and shouted out for her dad it was her body's response and i have not had that but i've had the mental images the visualization so i would just encourage you to not be scared of it let it happen let it go there and allow yourself to feel whatever you need to feel it doesn't feel good like I said when I told her I felt resentment I said it doesn't feel good to feel that because I don't I feel bad for putting that on the person because I don't think that's fair and I don't actually believe that but that's where my mind went and what my body responded to and so we started with that we that's literally what we started the process with was that feeling and that belief so so anyways that was this week that's all i gotta say i'll see you guys in the next one bye